right? Many of us get caught up in pleasing folks just to make them leave us alone, mm -hmm. right? I'll just say a few phrases or whatever and, and just get off my back. But this scripture says that a person who is in Christ, a person who's walking after the Spirit, a person who wants to please God will please his neighbor, please her neighbor for the purpose of that person changing. Because that's what edification means. But how can I hope that someone else will change if I, change. If I haven't changed myself? Mm -hmm. That's where the first one comes in, becoming strong. Right? So I just want, that's the second point. I want us to understand that a person who abides in the Lord ought to be edified him or herself so that others may be edify, edified through their example. The last point. Verse 4, uh, verse 3, excuse me. It says, For even Christ pleased not himself. But as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. For whatsoever things were written the fourth time were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now the God of patience and consolation grants you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus. Now this scripture in verse, uh, verse 4 says, the things that were written, a four time, specifically talking about Christ, were written for our learning so that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. In other words, we through the word of God might be able to have hope. So, we through the word of God, when we trust in the Lord, when we do what God, God says, might be able to realize the promises of God. In other words, we have to become strong, we have to be edified and edifiers, and we also have to be manifestors. We have to be strong, edified and edifiers, and manifestors. In other, in other words, the word of God has to become real for us. And that's what it says. It says, through our, through our learning, it says, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, we might have hope. We might be able to hope. So he says in verse 5, so now that God of patience and consolation grants you to be like-minded so that we can be just like Jesus, realize the things that God has promised us. Now, all that may not make sense right now, but you'll see it as you go on. So I just want to lay that foundation. The Christian is not supposed to seek to please him or herself. The Christian is supposed to seek to please someone else. And specifically, what please means, in, according to first chap chapter 5, is, is meaning, means us trying to edify someone else, us pushing for someone else to change towards God. Now, I say that, and, you, and, and so now, now we have a foundation. Now, go to Matthew chapter 3, and you'll see this. Why is it that we should not seek to please ourselves? And what is it about God's pleasure that's better than anything we try to do for ourselves? Matthew chapter 3, I want you to go to verse 13. Because in order to understand how we're supposed to act, we need to understand what, how Jesus acted. Because that's what he says in verse 5 in Romans 15. He says, you be, be like-minded. Take the same mind as Christ. In Matthew chapter 3, verse 13, it says, Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be Baptize of thee, and comest thou to me? And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh to do what? Fulfill all righteousness. Now stop, I want us to think about that. Now we talked about something before. We talked about the reproaches that fell on Jesus were, were there because he wanted to please other people. He wanted to change other people. Now, we have a lot of people in our lives who want change. Amen? Amen. Is that, I mean, am I talking to some folks? You got this whole folks in your life who you want to change, right? But 
it's, it's impossible to desire those people to change if you ain't willing to change. And I think many times we forget that. I think we, we, we set standards for folks who want them to change and want them to do better, but we're not willing to do it ourselves. We think it's okay for us to uh, languish and walk around and doing stuff that we know. See, it is funny because people, people we, we talk about studying the Word, but the problem with most Christians is they don't do what they know to do that's right. They know they're just supposed to love folks, but we don't love folks. In fact, the problem, the problem that set Romans 15 sets up is that the scripture says that we're supposed to bear other people's infirmities, which means that when people, we're supposed to help people in their problems, even the problems that end up attacking us. Y'all hear me? In other words, I'm supposed to help people and be willing to bless people and please people that hurt me. That's what Jesus did. Jesus saved the very people that killed him. His desire was so powerful and so awesome for God. His, his, his desire to please God was so much that he was willing to give himself over to the very folks that hated him. 